pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, Mrs. Mayor, if you would please do the roll call. I will do so. Anita Jagosinski. Here. Kate Mayer. I'm here. <laughs> Lisa Collins. Uh, I haven't heard from her. So. All right. Tim Meniger. Here. Gary Dunlap. Here. Tom Cruise. Here. Jeff Young. He's excused. Okay, thank you. And Cheryl Hancock. She's excused. Thank you. Okay, um, with notice of a quorum, with five of the seven board members present, I will declare a quorum. Approval of the agenda. I would note that the agenda has been posted, distributed, and sent to the local media. With this in mind, are there any changes to the agenda? If not, I would entertain a motion to approve the agenda as published. So moved. Second. Okay. Uh, any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion to approve the agenda as published, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, signify by saying no. Motion passes. Public participation. If there's anyone who wishes to address the board relative to any item at this time, we ask that you come forward, um, state your name, five minute time limit per person um, is to be followed. Anyone? No one? Okay, short meeting tonight. Uh, recognition and thank you, Dr. Mueller. Yeah, I have one recognition. This week has actually um, been proclaimed our school bus driver recognition week, but actually in the school district of Holman, we, want, we recognize our whole transportation department. And um, we just really like to thank them and their whole entire team for all they do day in and day out, all from the mechanics that fix the buses to our um, educational assistants on the buses, our bus drivers. We, just, we have so many people that play a part in getting our children to school safe. And then especially our, le our leadership in that department with um, Beth Hobbs, um, our transportation supervisor. Um, you know, we just want to thank them for all they do in the rain, shine, or shine, rain. <laughs> <laughs> and it snows, <laughs> especially with the roads they've been and um, all the efforts they do to make sure our kids get to school safe. So thank you to them. Thank you. Um, reports and discussion, middle school, school counseling, PLC, Erica Kohlmeyer and Jen Dinger Hansen. So I'm Erica Comer, I'm the 8th grade school counselor, we're actually looping counselors, so we're the counselors per grade level, and we are lucky enough to have some of our 8th graders speak with us tonight, and so they're going to talk with us a little bit about our 8th grade career fair. And so on January 20th, um, all of our 8th grade students, so over 260 students, traveled down to the Lacrosse Center um, for the 8th grade career day. It's a combined effort of nine area schools along with Western Technical College, Essentials and Health, excuse me, Essentials Health Clinic and Valley View Rotary. So in general, along with our Holman Middle School students, there were 1,300 eighth grade students and over 75 presenters. And at that point, the students heard three sessions on career pathways, which Ms. Singer is going to get into in just a moment. And the presenters talked about all different things, not only their career path, but the education and training, and their education and training even at the middle level and high school level, that's really important. Um, they talked about making good decisions now and, that, and how that relates to future work experience. They talked about um, just different things that they can do in the community. So a variety of different things as it relates to their career and relates to what students are interested in. So this year was a little bit of a change for us. In the past, we've looked at, you may have heard of the Wisconsin career clusters, there's 16 of them, and this year we dug in a little bit deeper and broke it down after just getting feedback from our staff and from our students last year. So we broke it down further to the to 41 of over 80 career pathways. And so um, if you just want to go to the next one, and I'm not going to read them all to you, but what you'll see is it's organized. The heading for each of them is the cluster, the Wisconsin cluster. And then under each cluster are the pathways that were represented. So again, like Ms. Kohlmeyer said, each student had a choice um, of what, which, which pathway they wanted to 
hear about, and really um, their choices were really honored. So they got a chance to prioritize, I believe, four of them, mm -hmm. and then based on a master schedule, were placed into three of those pathways. And we'll introduce um, our students and let them tell you a little bit about what they learned. Do you guys want to go in order? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not. Are you okay going for it? <laughs> I'm Lucas Bell, and career day really helped me in choosing the jobs later in life that you really think are going to satisfy you. And I know that all three of what I chose will definitely will definitely help me later in life. Yes, a lot of the speakers were very nice. Uh, I just loved career day. <laughs> cool. <laughs> I Yang and uh, one of my sessions were the military section and one thing I learned in that one was that the thing that needed is represented by Bob Jones. My name is Keelan Dinger, and um, one of the uh, sessions that I went to was networking presented by Cassidy Miles. And uh, one thing that I gained from it uh, was that I didn't know that you can get an internship to learn hands-on and uh, figure out if that's what you want to do later on in life. My name is Lizzie Papadopoulos and um, one of my sessions was travel and tourism and it really helped me learn more about what I want to do later in life with traveling. to was patient care. Uh, I learned that you had to do a lot of, you have to put a lot of time in and a lot of money. <laughs> and that helped me grow up uh, about like being an athletic trainer. Thank you very much, you guys. So this <coughs> career day has been a great connection for many of our students. This is our second year participating in it. However, it's been going on for over 20 years. Um, and just within the last two years, they've added several schools, which is, ends up being a pretty, pretty big event to plan. Um, but it's great for our kids because it makes a lot of personal connections for them. All of these students have had a career academy, which is a quarter-long class at the end of the day. We do a lot of um, interest inventories learning style inventories and do some exploration to make connections to their interests and their strengths to the future world of work and their future decisions. Um, and then at the end we have an individual planning conference which all of these guys have participated in as well and their parents come in and we talk with them about their hopes and dreams for the future and their strengths and interests in their portfolio that they create and we'll have um, one of our other counselors coming to a future meeting to talk a little bit more about that. And right now it's really hopefully connecting with many of the students in that they just turned in their high school registration forms. So it's kind of putting some of those pieces together, doing some of that learning now and how does that fit in with the decisions that I make. And some of those decisions are right now. So it's pretty exciting for them. Part of this is just as we continue to think about how we are going to work towards purposeful learning, really having, even at the sixth grade level, having students be able to talk to us about why they're at the middle school and what kinds of things they want in their education. That all comes through some of the things that are going on with the academic and career planning, um, that which is a state mandate that will be coming through and implemented in 2017 for all students 6th through 12th grade. That really leads into um, some of the work that we are working on as a counseling group this year in our curriculum study and really looking at how we're delivering those services to all students and also how we're partnering with all the other curricular areas so that it's not just uh, something that we are presenting, but that as a, a whole staff, we are talking about meaningful learning with all students. Do you have any questions? Anybody? Questions? I have um, a question. 
No, go ahead, Tom. Um, how long has this been in place? This whole, I, I, know, you, I know you're counselors, but how long have you been doing this sort of long-term planning with the students? I think it's really awesome that they come up here present. So um, a couple different questions. So the, the um, actual class and then the meeting that takes place, we've had that fully implemented. 2014, um, the yeah, graduates of the, the class. The graduates of 2014 were the first class that the whole class received that instruction and then had that follow-up meeting with parents. So we've been, we've been at it a long time. We're very proud of that work. As we go to different um, groups where we're counseling networks, we're finding that not all districts have been able to, to implement, implement that at that level. So we're, we're proud of that work and we're proud that um, our administrators have supported us in that work. And our families too. We get great family turnout at the meetings. I would say we're in the 90 percentage, you know, as far as the amount of parents that will come in for the meeting. This is really awesome. I am. I, is there any kind of? Just curious because I'm always a business model kind of guy. Is there any way you can track your product down the road that we can show how good we are? I, I, do you have anything like that? I'm just curious, long term, because it's some. You know, this is a. You know, when they graduate from college or whatever what they're going to do and you know they come back and they say this is a good school for a b c and d i'm just curious if you have thought about that i think that's definitely part of something we've talked about in our curriculum study and planning as we look at outcomes you know sometimes it's difficult to pinpoint the outcomes of the work that we do they're not always directly measurable but i think what you're talking about tom is like some of those impact um surveys you know where those I've gotten them myself. Where have you? Where are you today? Kind of thing. So I think those are definitely things that we will be looking at mm -hmm. with our curriculum study. These young people. Uh, I'm a Bears fan, by the way. Um, they. Um, <laughs> they. Uh, I, I, empowerment is really huge. So congratulations. Thank you. And just so you know, they are all very well equipped to <coughs> handle an emergency. We did have. A, we just got started with our very first session, and we had a fire alarm, and we had to. Um, <laughs> take all 700 plus students out of the building the and, and be, oh. be proud no one none of the students pulled a fire alarm they did have a water <laughs> issue that made us they were great well, and they did a great yeah, job they were awesome they so. handled it with grace and charm yeah thank you thank you i just wanted to say that i'm pretty sure all of you like how many of you are sixth graders all eighth graders. These are all eighth graders. They're all eighth graders. So in your past, I'm sure you had a mentor. So my question for any of you to answer is, part of having a good mentor is you, each of you, each of you, and you're so well-spoken, being a mentor yourself to engage other people behind you. Have you thought about that? Oh, I know. I'm putting you on the spot, right? How many of you uh, have younger brothers or sisters or younger cousins who might look up to you or just younger kids in the neighborhood? You know, those are ways that you're mentoring kids right now. You're being role models to them too. Yeah, and that's what I'm saying too. I'm, I'm so proud of you, all of you. And, and when I take pride in student leaders, then I want them to be student leaders for other younger people. So think about that and who you can influence because you are the best influence ever you are you are the peers i just wanted to say i work in a middle school and we don't have a program like this in the middle school i work in so it is really impressive you've really done a nice job and and you kids are pretty impressive too um, nice job to line up and um, talk about that and I was curious because you didn't specify the three areas that you you went to I heard the other kids talk about what they were interested in I had more of like engineering with technology I had uh, engineering web communications and uh, that's okay like graphic design or something. something I knew it was something technology based but I'm not off the top of my head with yeah, it. Okay, I was picturing like technology something. <laughs> okay, well, good job. Thank you for coming tonight. Thank that you. was very interesting. Very good. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks Thank for you. sharing. <laughs> okay, and next is 8.2, the 2016 summer school, school principals.
Someone might need to log in. Just sure. You might have to log back in. Does Christina need to do it? What happened? We'll get her up. Oh, they locked her. Okay. I think as she's getting it up, we can actually just get started if that's okay with you. Yeah, sure. Um, <laughs> for elementary summer school this year, we are going to hold it at Prairie View Elementary. Um, and the capacity there is 550-ish. Um, so that is probably our biggest change um, for this year's summer school for elementary. We're still going to have our early childhood special education class and an ESL program. Uh, we are also going to have um, where teachers can recommend that students take remedial reading or remedial math, but then they also get an enrichment class that they select. Um, if students were not recommended for reading or math remedial work, then they get to pick two enrichment classes. So. Um, I think that is basically it. Um, the purpose here, you can read through what maybe you've already had a chance to take a look. Um, basically, with the special education students and the ESL students, we just continue to support them as we would during the school year. Um, with our ESL program, they really work hard to pre-teach concepts so that the students are prepared for the upcoming school year. So. It's nice to have the date pretty close to the start of the school year. Um, we're going to run the same time frame as last year, July 18th to August 4th. Um, again, here are the classes. And in order to be an early childhood special education class, the students must already be enrolled at our program. Same for um, the ESL program. Ready, Set, Let's Learn is for incoming kindergarten students so that they're prepared for kindergarten. Um, reading and math adventures are those remedial classes um, and then we'll have various enrichment classes um, it'll be all be online for the parents to take a look at with their kids and select which courses they'd like to take so any questions on elementary okay Thank you. thanks All right, on to middle school. We uh, mirror the same dates as the elementary school, so you can see that that is the same and times will be the same as they have been in the past. Our courses that we are <coughs> offering, we're actually in the midst of some really exciting meetings, took a lot of the impact or uh, the input that you guys had given last year and some of our future planning that we did at the end of last year's summer school session. We know for sure we will be offering ESL coursework for the first time at the middle school, so we're very excited about that. And right now we're in the planning stages of figuring out what types of enrichments we can offer because we will be expanding our enrichment program as well. So we are really hoping that we can get some good data, find out what the students are, are interested in, making sure that we can connect that to curriculum and to careers, and going forward with that. So although those classes haven't been solidified, they will be soon, and we hope that we can do that based on student interest and also the needs that they'll have going forward in school. So a lot of exciting changes, but we'll still be offering our music classes, our special education classes, like I said, we'll also have ESL support this year, and then help for those students who struggle in areas of ESL and also in math. So like I said, registration uh, music offerings are to all students remedial classes. We do that based on a number of different data points. And then those enrichment classes, some of them will be offered to students who excel, such as students in our TAG programs. And enrichment classes will also, for the first time, be offered to those students that will be going through remedial classes as well. Any questions? Thank you. Great. Thanks. Good evening, everyone. Um, I'll give you a brief update on our high school summer school. Um, like Mrs. Holter said, a lot of similarities and um, things that have not changed from last year, like the time frame and um, the time throughout the day. Um, however, we're excited because with the support of Mr. Bear and Dr. Mueller, we're looking at offering some more opportunities in a high school our size. Um, I personally feel it's really very important that we look at expanding our summer school um, for our students who may need credit makeup as well as students who um, want enrichment or need enrichment. Um, you'll see a lot of similar courses here. Um, I, I don't think I need to read them to you, but a couple that are not on previous years, if you would look back at last year's notes, are um, biology, chemistry, so science and social studies, um, some math, either enrichment or remediation. And how this is gonna, gonna basically work is based off of student interest as well as student need. 
Um, and you can, if you think about that, not all the students that uh, need it are interested and uh, vice versa, but um, our counselors and our teachers will work hard to promote summer school in a positive way and hopefully these sections will run. Um, hopefully this is just a step as far as offering more opportunities in the future. Um, on the right column there you see our music which runs a little bit later in the summer. So band, choir, and orchestra. Similar criteria um, as far as if a section would fill up students who are um, in danger of graduation or credit deficient would take priority. Um, after that we look at first come, first serve. Any questions for the high school summer school program? Yeah, I, um, I like the, um, the proactiveness of it. I know you covered a lot of things pretty quickly, but I think you hit on one key topic. I think that, and it's not because parents don't care or they, are, or they, they don't know, um, they're just too busy, is sometimes some of these courses, you know, they really should consider it for their kids. Because not that they don't, like I said, they don't care, but they maybe just don't know, you know? So that's really good. Yeah, we'll, we'll work hard to promote um, through different media. <clears throat> That's our job, you know, yep. really, it is to push that. You know. Question, um, it's, it's, and I know we've, we've talked about this off and on as, as a school board at times about the start time, and there's not a, a busing conflict over the summer. Has there been any discussion to the early start time at the high school because the busing issue doesn't appear to be a challenge over the summer? You know, that, that's a very fair, fair question. Um, I guess I, it's been past practice, so that's how we've left it. Um, we certainly can look at changing that. Um, part of it also is looking at uh, when we post the positions, who's willing to take the positions. And, um, you know, we would hope that we would find quality, quality um, teachers that are willing to teach, teach during those times. But I, I know last year we, we talked about the best time for some of our summer school teachers um, was the morning. Um, but if there's interest from other, other staff where we could be more flexible in that, absolutely, we can look at that. Because you mentioned transportation, that is not an issue with summer school for those of you that don't know that. Um, transportation is up to the families or the individuals in the summer. Yeah, and, and I know there's just a, a very fair question buzz yeah. lately about you know, the, the sleep and the early start times, especially on that age demographic student learning I just didn't know if that was ever a, ever a discussion especially as you know we've seen a lot more in the media lately about the the, the early start times yep. just, else? no I just want to thank all of them and I, I just I can't help myself someday hopefully this won't be an issue as we have year-round school and we won't have to deal with <laughs> summer school so. all right thank you okay thank you very much thank you Moving on, that's okay, don't <laughs> apologize, you're entitled. Um, consent agenda items. Are there any items that you would like to consider separately? Um, if not, I would entertain a motion to approve the items on the consent agenda as presented. I would so move. Is there a second? I'll second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion to approve the consent agenda as presented, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. All right. Um, board member reports and discussion. I will call upon board members in the order of roll call, and you can present any comments or committee reports you have. Um, first is Mrs. Mayor. Um, just briefly, um, I missed the last meeting, but I know that, Anita, you spoke to, to our audience um, about the chance to go to convention. Uh -huh. um, I'm so grateful that this district does this for us you know it's it's not cheap but I think what you get back with the bang for the buck is really good and my head is full of new stuff um, that I've learned um, so just um, a thank you to this district bless you <laughs> for allowing me to do that okay thank you um, miss Collins this is I meant to say Ms. I didn't mean Miss. Whichever. And that's fine, Anita. Um, Ms. Jasinski. Mrs. Jasinski, sorry. Um, I don't really have anything anything new to add other than um, 
I wasn't at the last finance committee. Apologize for that, but um, we'll be having another one in two weeks. Okay. Uh, Mr. Mettinger. Uh, just very briefly, we had uh, buildings and grounds committee tonight, uh, continuing to work on uh, some policies that uh, look to have before the board uh, soon. Mr. Dunlap. I would just like to thank the eighth readers for coming to see us tonight. So it's a pleasure <laughs> to see them. That's all I have. Yep. Uh, Mr. Cruz. Yeah, I like to say the same thing. It was nice, neat, neat seeing the students come present and talk and seeing how confident they are. There's, that's, that's our job to empower them as much as we can. I think we're on the right track. And Kate's head is always full of stuff. So I don't know. Which. <laughs> thank you. Um, and I just had a couple <laughs> comments. Um, I wanted to thank the eighth graders too for presenting. And um, just to remind the viewing audience and parents and whoever else is watching um, that there's a lot going on at the state level right now. We got a WASB um, legislative update today in our um, board email. Um, a lot of last minute things that are being looked at by the legislature. Um, kind of rushed through things today that were being talked about that'll be voted on on Wednesday that have to do with public schools and funding and vouchers and money going from public schools to voucher schools. I know at the candidate forum, one of the questions was um, that the candidates were asked was about uh, vouchers. How do you feel about vouchers? And um, I don't remember who, but someone had commented that they kind of compared open enrollment and vouchers and they're very different. Open enrollment has to do with public schools. Vouchers have to do with private schools. The money is going to a private school with a voucher, private schools that are not accountable in the same way public schools are accountable. Um, so a lot of the things that are happening in Madison right now really, really have the potential to devastate public schools, especially in the next month, couple months. So please, um, I'm, I'm pretty concerned, and if you care about public schools, this isn't just me preaching. I Please check out, um, go to the Wheeler Report and read what's going on every day legislatively, educationally, and get involved. Contact your legislators and um, do something. Stand up for public schools, because if you don't, we won't have them. And that's all I have. Um, I have a question for you. Do we know a date for the second time that proposal will be brought up? Is it next Wednesday? Which proposal? Thursday? Well, oh, in, the, in the Assembly Education Committee right. today, they had talked about at the last minute late this afternoon, we got an email that said that the, Senate, the Assembly Education Committee would be voting on Wednesday on their proposals on the Assembly Bill 751 that has to do with voucher schools and the money the way that it's and actually um, the money that Holman would lose if that was in place right now is $50,000 lacrosse would lose $228,000 um, just a lot of a lot of things on Alaska would lose $83,896 if that was in place right now that was a memo that was prepared by the Legislative Fiscal Bureau on Friday for you um, I appreciate that info and just there's a for lot. the five or six people that may watch the video. Yeah, yeah. You know? yeah. Um, it is really, really important. School funding so is, is just, that. it's crazy right now. I grew up up north in Tomahawk and Rhinelander has a referendum. Um, they're going to referendum on the 16th of February. And if their referendum does not pass, they have a proposal in place. If their referendum doesn't pass a week from tomorrow, they have to cut $7,183 from their budget in the next couple of years. They are closing the <coughs> elementary school. They will be eliminating all their co-curriculars. I mean, Google the Rhinelander referendum. It's scary stuff. That's public school funding right now. So pay attention and get involved. Um, anyhow, moving on, um, you have received correspondence. You see the board meeting schedule, February 22nd. Um, we have a board meeting, March 14th, we have a board meeting. Um, and then board policies and rules for review. Is that something that you wanted to address, Kate? No, because or that's, we'll, we'll talk about we'll that on that about them. Yeah. Okay. Um, and beyond that, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. 
I'm used to doing that, so somebody else has to. Me. So move. Oh, Gary. 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 <laughs> Eight second. All right. Um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. We are adjourned. 731. Wow.